So SQL Server DBAs, what do we do all day? Well, we install SQL Server. It has to get on top of the operating system somehow. Remember that SQL Server is an application. So when you're handed an OS, well, you're handed a Windows OS because that's the only thing SQL Server will install on top of is a Windows operating system. So when you're giving the Windows operating system and it's handed over by the network team or the Windows team and a database has to be spun up, you're given the media and then you have to install SQL Server. And then when you're done installing SQL Server, you have to configure it. Contrary to popular belief, it does not install itself and it is not self-configuring. We often have to migrate from other relational databases. For example, Oracle. Lots of people migrate from Oracle to SQL Server because it functions just as well and it's half the cost. MySQL. Lots of organizations install MySQL thinking it's free, that's great, and then you get it in the enterprise and here we come in behind them to bring the databases over from MySQL to SQL Server. So we migrate those databases. We upgrade SQL Server. About every two years, a new version comes out. There are lots of changes within the engine and lots of changes within the different components. So we have to know what they are. Lots of organizations still use SQL Server 2000, even though it's been out of date for decades. You can't just upgrade from SQL Server 2000 to the newest version, which is SQL Server 2014 and soon to be 16. You have to baby step your way up. So what else do we do? Well, the most important facet of your job is to ensure your databases are backed up in the event of a catastrophe. You need to be able to restore all the databases under your management in the event of an outage. So backing up and being able to restore those databases is tantamount to your success as a DBA. That is priority number one. We check the consistency of the databases. Databases live in different states. The majority of the time, we want them to be in an online consistent state. And it's our job to ensure that these databases are healthy. Security. We control access to the databases. We control what users can do. Can users read the data? Most of the time, that's all we want them to do in a production environment. Can they write? Can they delete? Can they update? The DBAs control that access. If I had a nickel for every time I heard this, I'd never have to work again. Why is the database slow? I don't know. Could be thousands of things. Could be the database. Maybe the database is slow. Could be the connection. Could be the app. Could be the app servers. But it falls on you and I, as DBAs, to act on that. To look at the database and say, is it slow? Your databases won't be slow if you tune them properly. However, tuning is not the easiest thing in the world. The skill set in the real world seems to be quite lacking. Under the umbrella of tuning performance, we add indexes. Indexes are objects, again, everything in the database is an object, so an index has to be an object, that speed up data retrieval for our queries. Right, we need to get the data, the information that's in that database, back to the user as fast as we can. So indexes help us, well, correctly implemented indexes help us do that. Settings. There are lots of settings. There are lots of knobs and switches within SQL Server. And it's our job to know what those knobs and settings do. Some are very straightforward. Some are absolutely convoluted. Some Microsoft sets incorrectly, and we don't know why but we need to tune those settings. So that's another thing we do. We need to ensure that the big three are satiated. What are the big three? SQL Server needs three things. It needs memory, it needs CPU, and it needs an IO subsystem fast enough to handle the load
that it puts on that subsystem. Oftentimes, I.O. is our issue. And that has to do with the idea of a shared tenant model, which means people buy SANs. SAN is a big pile of disks, and they put everything in the organization on that big pile of disks, and they throw the SQL Server databases on that big pile of disks, and what happens? That big pile of disks simply can't keep up with all the databases within the organization. So if we have a SAN problem, we need to go to the SAN administrator, throw him under the bus and say, all right, we need to move our databases off the SAN or need to buy a faster SAN source.